My story was about the Rohingya refugee crisis in Bangladesh and Myanmar, as well as some of the U.S. policy and political dilemmas uh, that were affiliated with it. Um, I spent a couple of uh, months on the ground, in uh, mostly in southern Bangladesh, um, as well as a couple of days in, in Yangon, the biggest city in Myanmar. But a lot of my reporting was also done in Washington, D.C., uh, because so much of this is about what happened here uh, during the Obama years, uh, when it seemed like Myanmar was really on the road to becoming a democracy as opposed to a military-ruled country. Uh, and uh, the Obama administration wanted to encourage that along. For this project, we received funding from the Pulitzer Center on Crisis Reporting, uh, and that funding helped me travel to Bangladesh in particular, uh, where I got to meet uh, many, many of the Rohingya refugees who had come over from Myanmar, some of whom had lost uh, so much. Uh, they'd seen their children, their spouses be killed, uh, they'd seen their houses get, on, get put on fire. Uh, and it was just really fascinating because this was a group that um, during the Obama administration years when so much else seemed to be going right in Myanmar and the U.S. was encouraging uh, the reform efforts in Myanmar, this was one group whose fortunes just went downhill during that entire time. And you can almost chart it. Uh, and so one of the central mysteries to me is what happened? Did the U.S. not see this coming? Did the U.S. not do enough? Should we have put more of an emphasis on protecting this one group uh, as opposed to uh, thinking about the broader geopolitical uh, advantages of having Myanmar uh, more in the U.S.'s corner? It really brought home to me how hard it is to make uh, these sorts of policy decisions when you don't have a lot of good options and when basically you don't have a lot of power or even that much leverage. This is one of those refugee crises that seems further away than even most refugee crises that are going on right now. Uh, I, I just don't think a lot of um, people in the U.S. are really fully aware of, of, uh, of what's going on and, and the overall impact that it can have on the region and on the world. The Rohingya um, are Muslims, and they're, they're not a radical group for the most part. They, you know, they're conservative, but they're not radicalized um, for the most part. But there's a lot of fear that they could be over time if they're stuck in these refugee camps, if Bangladesh doesn't let them integrate into their country, if they don't get to go back to Myanmar, uh, that these camps could become breeding grounds, recruiting grounds for Islamist terrorist organizations, some of which have in recent years started using the Rohingya example uh, as a, a rallying cry, as a cause, um, because they, they are being persecuted by Buddhists uh, of all religions. So um, if there is one thing that, you know, perhaps that will that will bring home to the United States is maybe this angle of the story. And I'm hoping with my story I can make at least a little bit of a difference for some.